He says, hey, evening, Nathan, great morning. It was a really good morning this morning, folks. Absolutely amazing morning. I'm just going to, if you want to join us in the building next Sunday morning, um, I'm going to, I'm speaking myself next Sunday. And, uh, oh, how long to try and get that off? Uh, so you can screenshot it and hopefully um, get the number. Um, so there's the number. Screenshot that and drop a text um, to that number. And Linda Swindle will be on the other end and she will um, get you sorted out. So um, we had loads of kids at Kids Church today as well. And if you have any primary kids, they'd be more than welcome um, to come along. Let's just take one or two more and then we will uh, bring tonight's guests in. There's uh, Jeanette. Hi, Jeanette. Um, Donna from Derry Hill. Not sure where that is, but uh, great to see you. There's Balamina coming in. Uh, Glory, Gloryford, good evening to you. Okay, folks, thank you to everybody who has shared it so far. And to everybody who's thinking about sharing it, go on, give it a wee share tonight. And if you're just tuning in, please do comment. Let us know that you're tuning in and let us know um, uh, who who you are, where you're tuning in from tonight. Okay, um, let's bring tonight's guests in. And uh, so please say hello to them in the comments. Uh, they're tuning in. Uh, from Dublin tonight, Tommy and Brenda. There we go. Good evening. How's it going? My name is Tommy. Obviously, this is Brenda, my wife. And uh, we're going to just share with you over the next few um, 20, 30, 40 minutes, whatever it is, about the goodness of God in our lives. Amen. Amen. And uh, we're just so excited to be here. Uh, and just to thank you, Nathan, for the opportunity uh, just to share our story. And we hope that those who listen in uh, will be encouraged, you know, and will uh, have that revelation that our God is a mighty God, that he is alive and that he is the God of breakthrough. Mm. You know, the God who changes and transforms lives. And we've experienced it. Uh, the power of Christ in our hearts and in our lives. And, and we just want to give that message out to other people as well. Yeah, because wow. the, Jesus has given us a testimony. Mm -hmm. Jesus has given us a story. And that story is not just for ourselves. Mm -hmm. This story is for you, is for people that are listening, probably going through the same things that we were going through and still even go through in their Christian journey. But we see the God of breakthrough walking in it all. So uh, stay tuned and be blessed. And the uh, the Lord Jesus will certainly do something in your heart tonight. Amen. Wow, wow. fantastic. And you know, folks, um, I'm looking forward someday to meeting this couple face-to-face uh, -face because they are two of the most enthusiastic people about Jesus that I have ever heard. So you are in for a treat tonight, folks, uh, and uh, it is so good to have you with us. Where exactly are you tuning in from tonight, Tommy and Brenda? So we're, we're living in Clondalkin in uh, in Dublin. We minister around Clondalkin, Tala area, a uh, church is in Tala. But uh, we live in Clondalkin, and that's where we're tuning in to from tonight. Fantastic. And I'll tell you what, uh, according to your Facebook, you two are madly in love, so you are. So no, no curtain or any kissing now on the live stream tonight, okay? <laughs> No, only no. Jesus, only Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, look here, um, folks, it's good to see many of you are greeting our couple tonight. And uh, it's good uh, to see your kind comments coming in um, to the couple tonight. And uh, please do keep that going as the night goes on. I want Tommy and Brenda at the end of the night to go back and look and just see um, how so many have been encouraged um, tonight. So look. If you believe um, in the Lord Jesus already, will you pray with us as we just pray for this couple and then we're going to hand over to them to share their story. So let's, let's pray for them, folks. Father, thank you so much, God, that you're alive. Thank you, Lord, that you're a God who's not just sitting in some far off place, letting humanity get on with it. But Father, thank you that you were so interested in humanity that you sent your son Jesus to this earth to die on a cross 
that we could have forgiveness of our sins and have a relationship with you, Heavenly Father. And God, we just pray tonight as our brother and sister, Tommy and Brenda, share what you have done in their lives. We just pray, God, that you will just speak into every life tonight. Yes, Lord. And we ask even more than just speaking, God, will you also help people just to open up their hearts Mm. to you. So, Lord, over the hundreds who are watching now and many, many more who will watch and catch up, Father, we just pray, change lives tonight so that your name will be glorified. Bless our brother and sister. Just, Lord, give them the words to say. And, Lord, just thank you for them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, guys, over to you. And uh, let me know when you want me back at the end, okay? Yes. Amen. Thank you, man. God bless you. God bless you. Okay, so praise the Lord. So my wife is going to go first at her story. Uh, Yeah. So where do we start? Because we do all have a story and it's just like, where do we start? You know, but I just start from when I first got saved because I got saved first. And then Hammy got saved um, about two years after me, two or three years years after me as well. So um, what happened was um, I I was a Catholic. I grew up as a Catholic. I, I went to church every Sunday as a child. My grandfather used to make sure that we went to church and um, done the confession, the rosaries, uh, light candles, all of that. And I always had a deep respect for Jesus. I always believed there was a God. Um, but God always, for me, seemed so distant, uh, so far away. And it happened then when I was about 26, 27, um, it was in 1998 uh, that we were in a very, very dark place. Uh, we were in a hopeless situation. Um, and I mean hopeless. It was really, really bad. And what had happened was we weren't married at the time, but um, Hammy was crap, uh, totally um, addicted to drugs like mm. heroin, methadone, crack, mm. cocaine, everything. And uh, life was really, really, really bad. And um, we had three young kids together. Um, My eldest was only five at the time. And life was just really, for me, it was all just about, I guess, surviving, you know? And there was an awful lot of shame attached um, to to the situation that we were in. Because, like, when I grew up, when I was growing up, I never imagined that, like, I would be living... um, with a drug addict and an unmarried mother with three young kids. And I guess at that time as well, I was pretty proud. Like I wouldn't want anybody to know how bad things really were, but things were really, 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 really bad. And anybody that's living with anybody in addiction uh, knows exactly what I'm talking about. It's like uh, your partner or your husband is actually having this affair, that the love for the drugs is more important uh, and means more to them than their love for you or even for their children. And um, yeah, so it was really hard and I had nowhere to turn, you know. Uh, My family were sick of listening to me at this stage of the game because I was always moaning, I was always complaining. And then at the end, I just couldn't talk to them anymore because they, they would say to me, just leave them, Brenda. Like, just leave them. What are you putting up with this for? Just leave them. Uh, so I stop telling people what was really actually going on and uh, I began to turn to the Lord I began to cry out to God for help uh, my mother became a Christian and the transformation in her life was incredible uh, she was healed from bowel cancer I seen how God just lit up her life and how he brought her out of depression and into just real joy you know she had this joy and this peace and she was always witnessing to me about Jesus and she was telling me about the church that she was going to and about the Christians that were involved in their lives and sometimes the Christians would actually come up and knock at the door and try to witness to me and that but at that time I think it was just like you know I believed in what uh, the Christians were saying I believed and I saw the change in my mother's life but I still thought I still thought I can have it, my own personal faith with God. I don't need to go to church. I don't need to be around other Christians or anything like that, you know. But I did see 
a tremendous change in my mother's life. It was quite incredible. And uh, she gave me a Bible and I began to read the Bible and I began to find strength from it. I really, really did. And um, once or twice um, I went to a church meeting and when we went to the church meeting, I used to think it was a setup. I used to really believe that they told the preacher everything about me because everything that he was saying, it was like pointing towards me. But what happened was in any way that I got a lot of strength from the Bible, a lot of a lot of strength. And Hammy got worse and worse and worse on drugs. And life was just really, really difficult. And we thought at that time, didn't we, that if we got out of talent, if we got out of the environment in that we lived in and moved away, somehow life would be easier. And what happened was we decided to go to County Clare. And it was while we were in County Clare, we were renting out a house. And uh, I was really pressing in. I was really reading the Bible. And it didn't stop you, didn't it, not from no, doing no. drugs. You would travel 200 yeah. miles up to Dublin to get drugs and, and everything else like that. And um one night I was in my bedroom. It was in September 1998. And uh, what happened was I just had this revelation. It was just like a thought came to my mind. And the thought was this, that I never received love in my life. Now I had a mother, I had family that loved me, but I didn't know how to receive that love. I was very hard. I didn't know how to show love. I never received it. I didn't know what love was. And I remember sitting on the bed, it was about half nine at night, and I was after just reading the Bible. And when that thought came into my head that I never received love, this is just what I said. I says, Jesus, I says, I open my heart to receive your love into my life. And at that very moment, it was literally like a light came into the room. It was like the presence of Jesus. He, he stepped into that room. He stepped into my life. He brought me out of darkness into light. And from the head, from my head right down to my soul, I was overwhelmed uh, with the love of Jesus. I was just absolutely overwhelmed uh, with his love and I couldn't stop crying. And it was like Jesus took hold of my hand. He took me hold of my hand and he was in that room. And I knew at that moment that Jesus wasn't far away. Uh, he wasn't up in the sky taking care of events that was happening in the world, that he was there and that he loved me. And yeah, and that's all I can explain that he was there and that he loved me and he just poured his love into my life. And it was from that moment um, I was totally changed. It was from that moment that Jesus became my best friend. It was from that moment that he became the light of my salvation, that he delivered me from all of my fears. And I knew at that time, um, I didn't know anything about church. Like I didn't know anything. I didn't know what praise was. I didn't know what salvation meant. I didn't know anything, but I knew that Jesus was real. Amen. I knew that Jesus was real. And yeah, I just experienced, even though everything around me was falling apart, he became my anchor. He became the one uh, in which I leaned on. He became my rock. He became my best friend. He became my everything. And um, he got me through a really, really difficult time. And he still gets me through uh, difficult times. But uh, he became my best friend, Tammy. And you just started, you were just... The thing about Jesus is, you know, the word of God says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we've experienced that in our lives. We've experienced the miracle, miracles of God in every area of our lives. Um, Jesus has done such a wonderful work on our lives and the lives of those around us that you would need a hundred days to explain the goodness of at least. But the thing about it was when I got, when Brenda got saved, um, I was in a horrible place, a yeah. really, really bad place. And when I reflect back onto my life, I was always lost. I was always lost. When I look back, even though I was a drug addict, it was never a drug, a drug issue. Even though I took drugs and drank and done all the skullduggery stuff, I was always just seeking something. I was always, in a sense, finding my way home. And, uh, yeah, but most of my life I've been lost. And uh, all of my life I've been lost. 
and Jesus is real. Uh, my story starts, I can remember back to when I was about five or six years of age and just hating life and just hating my own life and feeling like, is this it? Is this is what life is just all about? And I went through all of my life like that. Um, I always believed that I was going to be dead again. I was 20. And uh, in my own life, I've had numerous attempts upon my life. I've been I've been shot twice at point blank range on, on two different occasions. I've been stabbed in the back. I've had holes over my head. I've been in the hospital for four months with a, a, a split head, a fractured skull. But even with all of that, even with all of that, even though I felt the way I felt, one of the things that I remember in my life, when I used to hear about Jesus Christ and people saying that, you know, Jesus loved me and all of that, I used to look at them and say, well, yeah, you can probably love you because you're a good person, you know, and you do the, the church thing and you're just a real, you don't, you haven't lived my life. And in a sense, especially as a drug addict, I've, I've always believed, in, um, I always believed that there was a God. I've always believed uh, in Jesus because we were taught to, you know, being brought up in, in the Catholic Church and all of that. But the way we were taught was, I never thought he was interested in actually my life. That God only came for the good people of this world, not a filthy sinner not, uh, like me, you know. And uh, I remember the first time I was shot was when I was 17. I'll never forget it. And um, I was in a dark alleyway with this uh, girl at the time. And, and this man came down the laneway and he, he took aim at me. I, it was dark, so I didn't see the gun. And uh, he went to shoot me. And uh, when he shot me, it was like all the pellets came out and they were like red little lights. And it was like my life was flashed before me. And it was like a slow motion thing. And it stopped. And, and I'm telling you the truth. I don't lie anymore. Uh, but seeing these red lights coming at me, um, and they were going like that, and I could see that they were going to my heart. And they got about 100 mil away from my heart. And I didn't see a hand, but in a sense, now I know it was the hand of God. And I seen, like, a hand get up underneath the pellets, and it was like they were coming up, and I'm looking at them as they're going up. And he went up and over my head and actually had the girl that was behind me. I only got a few pellets in this side. And the, the two of us obviously survived that. But that was the first time that I encountered a miracle in my life. At the time, I didn't think it was a miracle because I didn't think God was interested in me. But I know Jesus saved my life at that time. And then up to the age of 20, I ended up in hospital a few times. It was like the devil was always trying to rob me life. And if he couldn't get me with, with violence, he tried to get me with suicide. Yeah. He was always getting me to try to run my life. I used to always hear his voice. And, you know, there's somebody listening to this tonight, and you hear that exact same voice that I heard. Go on, take your life. Yeah. Shall we go on living? It's a waste of time. This is as good as it gets. And I want to tell you tonight, it's not. God has got a purpose and plan and for your life. If you're watching this, I'm a testimony to the goodness of God. I have joy in my heart. I never had, I didn't know what joy was unless it was induced by drugs or alcohol. I didn't have a future or a hope. I didn't know what hope was. It was miserable. I was living a miserable existence. I have hope. Praise God. I have a vision for my life. Praise God. And God has been so good. He's been to us, so hasn't? good. And what happened was then is where well, like, uh, when when we got saved, I always remember Hammy coming in, and he had track marks all up his arm from injecting needles. And this was just after I got saved; like I was only saved like a week, you know. And he came in and he told me, he says, uh, "Brenda, I have something to tell you." Um, he says, "I have hepatitis C," and I'll never forget that. I never forget like when he told me that it was like a death sentence for me. And at that moment, I remember thinking, what on earth am I going to do? Like, what about me kids? Like, it was like, it was like saying, like, I have AIDS. 
that's what it felt like to me mm. and i was scared stiff thinking i was infected and i was saying what about me kids what about me kids you know and and the lord reassured me you know and gave me peace and says you're going to be okay brenda you know but it was in that time um as well hammy that god showed me um you know, before uh, before Hammy got shot the second time, that it was impossible to try and change myself, that I couldn't change myself. Yeah. Like when I came to the Lord, I was such a mess. I had, I was drinking, I was living in sin. I was, um, I had a terrible tongue. Like my language was really bad. Um, I was full of rage, um, full of fear. Um, and, and I mean like a very bad temper. Um, and uh, Jesus changed all of that gradually. He be all of these things began to fall away from me. Yeah. But what happened was um, when I got saved the second time, um, Hammy seen a change, didn't you, Hammy? Yeah, I knew that. I knew that Brenda had received the power, and that I couldn't manipulate her, use and abuse her any longer. I wasn't born again at this time, but I know that when Brenda got saved, when she got born again, she received, you know, we talk about as power from on high. And I seen that power actually at work in your life. Yeah. I seen the spirit of the living God in who, I didn't know what it was at the time, but I know she received power by the change in her life and this new life that she was living. And I couldn't manipulate her. No, you couldn't <laughs> manipulate me anymore. Any longer. <laughs> but, uh, so what happened was, because we just wanted, we want to really encourage us, you know. Uh, what happened was, Hammy, um, that I started to go to church, that the Lord led me to a local church up in Tala, and I started to go to church. And one night it was Halloween. And I always remembered, I was only saved a year, and, uh, it was Halloween night. We were back in Tala. And I always remember the, the preacher or the pastor and all the other Christians saying to me, don't celebrate Halloween. It's a very wicked time of the year. Uh, Christians shouldn't be involved in it. And I was rebellious and I wouldn't listen to them. And I said, ah, sure, it's no harm. It's only a bit of fun. It's just dressing the kids up. I won't dress them up as demons or at and evil. I'll put clown outfits on them or Star Wars or something like this. And I went out and I bought them an outfit each and I got them dressed up in any way for Halloween. And we went off out to uh, some fish, some restaurant or anyway. And we came home and it was half nine at night. And that night, for some reason, I put my kids up to bed early. I would never have put them up to bed that early on a Halloween night. And I put them up to bed early and I sat in the sitting room. I was exhausted. It was a tiring day and I was sitting in the sitting room. And Hammy was out in the hall getting something from underneath the stairs and next of all a knock came to the door and uh he opened the door and what did the guy say to you so it wasn't a knock what it was was halloween night in tala so i thought it was better to take me tools out of the van because in tala on halloween night it's quite Everything crazy so uh, i had the door opened and um this lad came into the door and he says are you tommy and me looking at he just says, yeah, <laughs> I shouldn't have said, yeah, uh, but I did. And anyway, and with that, it was like John Wayne, a gunslinger. And he let this gun, a sawn off shotgun, slip out of his hand or slip out of his arm. He had it up his arm and just shot me at point blank range. But the thing about it is, is this, you know, we talk about death and eternity and life and all of that. And one of the reasons that I believe God has given me a voice to speak and uh, to the last is this when i was shot i knew i was dying and um, there was no blood on it. i had a white t-shirt on at the time and there was no blood on it so i knew i was actually drowning in my own blood because there was a like a spike a dum dum bullet sticking out of my stomach and and i kept going in and out of consciousness and i sort of walked in the door and i says to friend that i'm after being shot and I was in this little hallway in there, in an old house that we used to live in. And I've been depressed in my life. Mm. I really have. I've been suicidal. I've come down off mountains of drugs. So I know what it is to be in the depths of it. But this was different. I knew I was dying. Mm. And I knew I was facing, I wasn't saved. I wasn't born again. Um, 
And I knew I was facing a lost eternity. I knew it. I felt it. It was like death was staring me in the face. And I knew I was I was going to hell. I know that sounds horrible, but I knew I was going to hell. And I remember I had two teams of, of paramedics around me. And, and I had my wife and she was praying in the corner. And I was like standing there. I didn't even want to bend down because I thought if I, if I sit down on the sofa, what will happen is the blood will rush. So I was sort of trying to stand going in and out of consciousness and feeling. You know that night, as I said, I've been suicidal. I've come down off drugs. But I have to be honest with you. That is the loneliest place I've ever been in my life. I've never experienced the loneliness mm. of that place. And I knew at that moment in time that there was only one person that I called I could call on. I genuinely, as I said, like I was a I was a criminal, I was mm. a wicked, evil man. I've done stuff in my life that that most people would even dream about. I've done wicked, horrible stuff in my life. I've been a very vicious man. Uh, yeah, all sorts of stuff. Uh, mixed up with the wrong people and that. And then um, seeing horrible stuff happening in my life and the lives of others. But this was, this was a crazy, crazy, crazy feeling. And I remember standing in that hallway and saying, look, Lord, if you give me one more chance if you just give me one more chance it's like i swear i'll turn this around yeah. i'll turn this around and start living for you and then boom i went into i went into where uh, i just went out of consciousness and, and i was in the coma for three or four months or something like that and uh i died during that covid I uh, drove COVID. I died during that COVID. Uh, COVID. COVID. COVID on the brain, isn't it? Mm. Um, and uh, when I came through and I woke up, I knew, I knew I was alive. And the moment I opened my eyes, uh, I asked the person that was standing beside me, could he get me a Bible? When I died, and I know I died, it's like, you know the way you hear people talking about, you know, your life flashing before you. I seen that. I seen this tunnel. I went up the tunnel. It was like I was on this train, and on the left and the right-hand side of me, it was just my life and everything that I'd done in my life. And I'm looking out uh, as I'm traveling up this train, or up this, yeah, on this train. And at the top, I could see three figures. And as I said, I wasn't, I wasn't a Christian. I wasn't born again. Uh, I think I had, this time I had given up sort of on God. But the thing about it was there was three people at the top of that tunnel and they were waving me. But they were waving me in a way that was saying, like, no, no, go back, go back. And I'll never forget that as, as long as I live on this life. The three people was me, 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 me sister who had died of leukemia as a kid. Um, my cousin who had died, she was spying a bit for that, and she died at seven. And the other one was this Christian lady who had just died of cancer and gone home to be with God. And, and I didn't really know who, but I knew it was this lady. And I seen her, like, radiant and, and beautiful. My cousin wasn't spying a bit for that any longer. She was normal and straight and, and just perfect. And so was my sister. My sister was always sickly obviously but you know dying of leukemia and that and living with leukemia for seven years and they were perfectly formed and like now i know it's the glory of god all over them and i came back and even after that experience when i got out of hospital i let god down he just got worse. worse. So he just got worse on the drugs. And yeah. even though he was in hospital and he was after, you know, when he was hooked up to the machines and that, they, they got him off the methadone, so to speak, and off the drugs and everything. And I thought, oh, this is great. You know, he's, he's not going to do drugs anymore. But his heart hadn't changed, you see. Mm. His heart, well, he wasn't saved. Do you know what I mean? And even though all those, all, all those things was taken from him, 
He hadn't got the power over sin. Yeah. He hadn't got the power to change himself. And that was like me as well. We, you don't have, Only Jesus give, can give you the power uh, to say no to sin. Only Jesus has the power to break sin off our lives, isn't yeah. it? And so he just got worse and worse and worse. Now, we weren't still married at this time. And I felt um, we were abstaining, right? But I felt the Lord say to me at this time, uh, that either to marry him, that God was going to deliver him mm. and that God was going to save him and to marry him. And so it was crazy because like everybody, and I mean everybody, thought I was crazy marrying him. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, they thought I was crazy marrying him because um, they thought, sorry, that's just something coming up. They thought, what are you doing marrying him for? Like, um, He's, he's a drug addict. He's never going to change. Like, he's after getting shot and everything, and he's, he's still taking drugs. He's a glutton for punishment, so to speak. But God gave me a promise, and God's promise to me was that the house of the righteous shall stand, and that God um, was going to save Hammy um, to be, so that he could be a father to my children. And you see, I grew up without a father, and I didn't want my children growing up without a father. And I knew that God was for families and like I says, even the pastor was saying to me, are you sure you want to marry him, Brenda? Are, are you sure? Like, and it was um, a relationship uh, before I got saved. It would have been really bad. It was a lot of violence, a lot of abuse, all of this, that and the other in it because of the drugs and because of just the way we were at that time. And uh, what happened was, yeah, we went to Edinburgh. And we decided to get married. I actually asked him to marry me because <laughs> uh, I wanted to honor the Lord. And we actually went to Edinburgh and we got married. And um, nobody came with us. We didn't have a big celebration with everybody else because everybody thought we were crazy getting married together. They, Everybody, like everybody thought we were mad getting married. Like what planet are you on, Brenda? You know, and um, so what happened was we got married. Yeah. and we had a great time in Edinburgh it was brilliant we went to the tattoo festival over there and everything it was absolutely amazing and then Hammy just got worse and worse that's when he went on the cocaine and you just got worse yeah. and worse and the worse. thing about it is is you know when I got out of hospital uh because I didn't become born again, even though I says, Lord, you know, if you get me out of this one, I will straighten out my life and live for you. But I didn't get born again. No. I didn't receive the spirit of the living God into my heart. Uh, obviously, because I still felt that I wasn't good enough, yeah. you know, and I'd done really bad things in my life. And the thing about it was, for three, I think it was three years after being shot, I was full of fear. Two years. Two years. Two years. I was full of fear. I hadn't found out who had shot me. I, 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 I know now, now who done it. But um, at that time, it was very hush-hush because it, it was political in a sense. So it was always like hushed-hushed and nobody had it out there. So for two years, I never slept at night. I'd only, I, would, uh, I would sleep during the day. There was a constant fear in my life, you know, because no matter how hard I thought I was, Losing your life, it, it, it is. It, it's a, or the risk of getting shot again, yeah. and your enemies coming after you. And God really protected us at that time, didn't yeah. He? I mean, really, like genuinely. And it was a blessing that we didn't know because at that time, you probably would have tried to retaliate. In fact, it nearly did happen that they set him up to be murdered again. But that's another story. Yeah. But um, but what happened wasn't anyway. So we got married. And you got worse, and yeah. you got worse, and it got so bad, Hammy. You were the worst. You were in the worst state that you were ever in. Do you mm. remember? Crashed the car. Um, you lost everything, didn't you, Hammy? You were on a thousand yeah. pounds worth of fifteen hundred pounds worth of cocaine nearly a, a week or a day or whatever. It was just really horrific. Yeah. Look, look at God has always been faithful yeah. to us, hasn't he, Brenda? He really has, and uh, God is a good God. Mm. And uh, when Second. I did finally have that experience with Jesus, it was just amazing. Um, what happened to me was I was in a, I remember one, one New Year's Eve, um, 
it was 2001 and uh, I was sort of away from Vendor again and I was strung out to the backbone on, on crack cocaine. I was using 2,000 euros worth of coke a day and uh, really, really in a hopeless place. And I remember I was sort of sleeping in a car park, in a van, in a car park up in Tala. And I was there on New Year's Eve 2001 and I had loads of drugs and I had loads of money. But um, I was just suicidal and, and, and I just started crying like a baby, literally. And I said to me, mate, beside me, I says, I just hate me life. I really do hate me life. I, I hate the way I'm living. Here I am, New Year's Eve, and I should be at home with me wife. I should be with me kids. And here I am in a car park doing drugs. And, you know, I never, I never got that feeling. It never left me the hopelessness that I had on me life. And... Um, I didn't even do drugs that night. I literally cried myself to sleep. And when I said it to me, mate, me mate said to me, he says, look at me, shut up. You're wrecking me head, you're wrecking me buzz. And, uh, you know, and I literally fell asleep. And I tell the story that, you know, me mate didn't listen to me that night. Mm. But Jesus was Amen. listening to me that night because that was New Year's Eve 2001. Four days later, God stepped in. God stepped into my life and was to change my life forever. Completely. So when I came to Jesus previous to this, because I started going to church, I was the greatest fake Christian that you could meet. I could do all the hallelujahs, the praise the Lord. I could do all of that, but I was always chemically induced. I was always on drugs down there. So this waving your hands and shouting hallelujah. And we like doing all of that because I got a buzz out of it from the drugs that I was taking. And I always said to Brenda, you know, when I start going to church, yeah, I'm born again. I'm a Christian because I go to church. I'm a Christian because I go to prayer meetings and to Bible studies. And I always, I said at the beginning that I believed that I was a Christian. But Brenda used to say to me, what was it? Uh, do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sin? Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sin? And I turn Couldn't around and say to her, but you don't be so stupid. How can it? How can a man that came 2,000 years ago say he died on the cross for me? And this is, look, I'm a Christian at this stage, believing in all of that. I could believe in the, the Red Sea. I could believe the part of the waters. I could believe in the bone and bush. But I couldn't believe that uh, Jesus died for me sin. And the reason I couldn't believe Jesus died for me sin was simply this. I didn't think anybody would love me that much. Yeah. I never, I didn't think that Jesus would love me. Uh, love me that much that he'd lay down his life for me. Yeah. I didn't think anybody could be that interested in my life to give me a, a second glance. And here they are telling me that this man called Jesus, if I put my faith in and trust in him, he'll change my life. I, it, it was like a stumbling block to me in a sense, because I never believed that somebody could love me that much. And up to that point, when I used to invite Jesus into my life, I used to invite him into my life to get me off drugs or get me wife back or to make me a better person or... You know, all of that stuff, superficial stuff in a yeah, sense, yeah. you know, to give me peace in my troubled mind. And uh, the thing about it was I, I went into it like a Christian home uh, after that event in, on New Year's Eve. And I said to myself, I'll give it four days. And as soon as the cold turkey comes on from the drugs, mm. I just want to... I'm not putting my body, my mind through sickness, through cold turkey any longer. Because I had tried to get off drugs loads of times beforehand and it never worked. And I remember I was in this house for four days and, I, and there was nothing happening to me. I wasn't getting any sickness or anything like that. I thought, man, this is a bit weird, you know. But like, where's the cold turkey? Why am I not getting sick? And it says, right, I'm gone on the fourth day. The methadone sickness is going to come on the fourth day. And then I'll get up. I'll leave. 
and everybody will welcome me back in because, uh, you know, at least I'm making an effort. And I'm sitting there on the on the fourth day, and I'm watching TV, and there's a TV show about not TV. The lad put in the house put on a testimony about this UVF head who came to Jesus and laid down his life. And to be honest with you, I wasn't really that interested because I considered him the enemy. I would have considered myself of the other side. And so I wasn't really interested in in what he had to say. So um, I was just sitting there, half listening, looking at it and not looking at it, drinking a cup of tea. But then at the end of his story, he said something that was just going to change my life forever. He says, look, he says, I picked up drugs to be a man. And it never made me a man. He says, I picked up drink to be a man. And it never made me a man. He says, I used to run around with guns. And it never made me a man. And he says, uh, it was only when I picked up the Bible, I found out that I could be the man that God wants me to be. Yeah. And something happened. Mm. At that moment in time, I just started bawling. Yeah. And I says, that's my story. Yeah. He's telling my story. That's I'm actually looking at my story on the telly because I was everything he was. And it was like I was looking at my story on telly. And as I said previous to this, I always came to Jesus for healings and get me off drugs. And I knew at that moment, the, the, the lad that was running the house at the time walked out. And I ran out after him. And I says, Lordens, I says, I need to be forgiven. I need to be forgiven. And I started crying and bawling my eyes out. And I started screaming at the top of my voice, Jesus, 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 forgive me. Forgive me. Because I knew it was my sin. For the first time in my life, I knew I took responsibility in my life. And I I was, it was like, I had, well, I had got a vision of Jesus on the cross and he was looking down on me and I'm on my knees and I'm bawling and I'm screaming, Jesus, 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 forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And uh, I'm looking up at him and I should have been judged. I should have been feeling condemned because of all the wickedness that I had done in my life. And as I was looking at his face, all I was seeing was love. Love that I never experienced in my life. And I just see love instead of judgment, love instead of condemnation. And uh, I got up off the ground, a brand new person. Like I mean, brand new. My mind was brand new, my body was brand new with no sickness. I didn't go through cold turkey and I was on drugs donkey years. Yeah. My body was healed from hepatitis of a of a brand new body. Hallelujah. I went and got a test and a Muslim doctor came out to me and he says, Yeah, I see by your chart that you had a hepatitis C. And he says, You're right. I used to have hepatitis C, but I'm a follower of Jesus Christ now. And he has healed me body. And do you know what that Muslim doctor said to me? He says, well, I've never drank tea. I've never smoked cigarettes. He says, I've never put a drop of alcohol into my body, into my mouth. And he says, your liver is healthier than my liver. This is the God that we are talking about here tonight. God is in the business of changing lives. See this beautiful, wonderful woman that I have beside me. It wasn't always like this. You've heard Brenda's story of how, man, it was madness in there. Crazy. Life. Violence. A couple of weeks before I got saved, this is how bad this was. A couple of weeks before I got saved, I'm chasing Brenda around their house. With a gun. With a sound off shotgun. To shoot me. Wanting to kill her because I blamed her. On my miserable existence. And the thing about it was, I was that mad 
that I was saying, I dare you to, <laughs> I dare you to, you don't have the, you don't have the nerve, you don't have the nerve, I dare you to, but like that, like, Hammy has saved 20 years, and together, like, when he, when I seen him after he got saved, the change in him was unbelievable, like, it was incredible what Jesus uh, did in his life, it really, yeah. and it is incredible what Jesus, there was immediate breakthrough, um, when he came home, and this is this is kind of funny in a, in a little way, but when he came home, um, he, what was it? Your heavenly minded and no way to use. He was like just yeah. in the Bible. I was still a little bit stressed about money and things like that. He was just in the Bible. He was praising the Lord and all of this, that and the other. But what happened was God was doing something new in our lives. Mm. And uh, we were arguing, weren't we? Uh, we were arguing constantly. And I remember praying and I remember saying, Lord, it shouldn't be like this. Like all I've ever wanted and all I've ever prayed for was Hammy to get clean off drugs and to be delivered and to be saved and to be worshipping you. Why am I not happy? And the reason why was because it was about control. And it was, I was the one that was always in control, always looking after the kids, always being the breadwinner. And now he was a new man. And he wasn't Hammy the drug addict anymore. And so things had to shift. And it was all about, you know, uh, being a husband and a wife and submitting uh, one to another. Yeah. And we prayed one day, we were after argue, after being arguing, and we said, we can't live our Christian life like this. Like, God has been so good to us. You know, the enemy was trying to divide us. And we sat here in this sitting room, and we prayed to the Lord, and we asked God to forgive us, and we asked Jesus you know, to, to be the center of our marriage. And we says, Lord, we want to build our marriage on your word, on your ways. And boom, straight away from that. We don't argue anymore. Very, yeah. very, very silly little things. Don't last very long. But we don't argue the way we used to argue. Um, I say it better. What do you say? I say it better. I just say it like this. And this is the truth. For all you men out there, this is the <laughs> truth. I have a fairy tale romance with this beautiful woman that just keeps getting better and just, better. We are with each other 30 years and okay for the first few years it was really bad but you know God gives you that fairy tale romance. He can make something beautiful out of the ugly. I've experienced that we've experienced we are head over heels in love with each other. We are and we're be <laughs> and we are no we are yeah and we're best friends. And we're in team, we're a team. And um, and God has been so faithful and he redeemed our lives from the pit of Amen. destruction. And he's continuing to change and transform us. And he has used doors, you know, to be a witness to others and to lead people to him. And there's no greater joy. There's no greater passion. There's no, there's no greater thing than to live your life for mm. Jesus. And no matter, even if you're married, if you're on the brink of divorce and you think that, uh, you know, that it's over between you and your husband, let me tell you, our God can redeem your marriage. Our God can walk a miracle in that and pour new wine into new wine skin. Amen. Amen. And I tell you this, let me just finish with this. I think we're nearly there. We're nearly finished. Yeah, we have to Can finish. I just say this to you? The person we are talking about tonight is real. Yeah. And you may be on the fringes and you may be going to church and, and sort of sussing out this, this lifestyle, even watching this. If you don't believe in God, I want to say to you tonight that the Lord Jesus has a plan and a purpose for your life. And, you know, the Bible says that the steps of the righteous man are ordained by yeah. God. And God has us here tonight, not because we've been invited, but because he wants to speak something into the lives of those who are looking at this. And you may not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour. And you may look at this and say, I mean, look, because I used to say, I used to look at these Christians with their shiny faces and say, man, I want what they have. I always thought it was out of my grasp. I wanted, he had something that I haven't got. No matter how much I drank or took drugs, I knew they had something in them. And you may be in that place tonight. You may be thinking tonight, well, look, God's not that interested in me. Does he know what I've got up to in my life? I want to tell you that the Lord Jesus Christ has a plan and a purpose for your life. Amen. And I want to ask you tonight, you know, as we sign off this, 
if you're watching this yeah. and what we've been talking about has been pulling at your heartstrings tonight, I just want to encourage you just to submit your life, this life that we have in Jesus. I'm telling you, it's amazing. And I'm just asking you to surrender your life to Jesus tonight. Surrender your will to God and say, Lord, look, I've been, I've been doing this. I've been walking out this life and, and it's, it's a struggle. It's hard. And I feel like ending that. I feel like giving up. I feel suicidal. I'm caught up in addiction. My marriage is not working. And I'm telling you, the God that we are talking about tonight wants to really intervene into your Amen. life. And I'm asking you tonight, not I'm asking you, forgive me, Lord Jesus, but he's asking. You know, heaven has stopped at this moment. And the Lord Jesus is just, it's like silent in heaven, waiting for you just to surrender your will unto his will, that he may have his way in every area of your life. Yeah. And if you're watching this tonight, I want to give you the invitation from heaven yeah. to give your life to Jesus. Allow him into your heart. Mm. Allow the spirit of God to empower you to be that person. So would you bear with me as I pray this prayer of faith? Mm. Let's bear in reverence unto God as you invite Jesus into your life as your Lord and Savior. And, and you know, email or, or text Nathan and let him know that I found Jesus tonight as I was watching this. Letting them know that I've yes. started a journey with Jesus. I don't know where I'm going, but I know who is in, in charge of where I'm going. Yes. He's given me a hope and a future. So let's bow our heads in reverence unto God. Hallelujah. You know, it's all about forgiveness. It's all about asking the Lord, Jesus died for your sins, for my sins. I don't care what you've done in your life. Jesus Christ, his love is bigger better, bolder, and greater than any sin that you've committed. So in reverence unto God, please bury your head and please pray this prayer of faith with me. Mm. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I just come before you. I just come before you. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. You've been tugging at my heart. You've been tugging at my heart. You've been tugging at my mind. You've been tugging at my mind. You've been tugging at my life. You've been tugging at my life. I ask you, Lord Jesus. I ask you, Lord Jesus. To forgive me of all my sin. To forgive me for all my sin. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Would you wash me in your blood? Will you wash me in your blood? Would you cleanse me afresh? Cleanse me afresh. Would you make me new? Make me new. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I invite you into my life. I invite you into my to life. To be my Lord. To be my Lord. And to be my Saviour. To be my I say to you, Lord Jesus, I say to you, Lord Jesus that, I will follow you that I will follow you all the days of my life, all the days of my from, life. Now from now and into eternity. And into eternity. Please, give me Please give me the gift, the gift of, your Holy Spirit of your Holy Spirit as I accept you now as, I accept you as, now, my, Lord, as my Lord and as my Saviour. Savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And Sovereign God, I just pray Jesus, right now in the name you, of Father Jesus God. that you would just, oh, Jesus, just Jesus. touch and strengthen Jesus. every heart that yeah, is that listening. Is Pour out your spirit afresh. Let Hallelujah. faith rise, Lord God. Yes, amen, and let Jesus. people cling to you and trust in you, Hallelujah. no matter what the difficulties they face, mm. no matter what this situation that they are in. Lord, I pray for breakthrough in marriages. Yes, I pray for healing for bodies, Jesus. Lord God. I pray for peace for troubled minds. Lord God, we ask you to stretch out your hand. Hallelujah. We ask Thank you for marriages that Jesus. are on the very of breaking up, Jesus, Lord, that you Jesus, would walk a miracle Lord. there, that Hallelujah. you would bring um, the husband or the wife mm. home. Lord, I ask you for yes, prodigals yes. to come Jesus. home today. Lord, we Hallelujah. pray that you would walk your miracles and meet the Jesus, needs of those Jesus. who are listening in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So listen, I'll, I'll put you back on tonight and it was lovely being able to share what God has done in their lives and uh, yeah, just be blessed. Amen. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Praise <laughs> God tonight. Praise God. Wow. I, I've i been just sitting here and uh, there's not many times I come back on 
speechless, but tonight's one. Um, you've, you, the two of you have took us on a real journey tonight, opening up your hearts, open up your lives, your home. And we firstly want to say thank you for your openness with us tonight, and especially even into your marriage, because um, I know that will really connect tonight with so many people. But tonight, well, you can't help but feel the emotion. Um, I've been sitting here welling up, but then at the point where I'm just giving God praise that he brought you both to that point. Brenda, well done sticking in there. Well done. <laughs> Well done. When many would have walked out, that you held on to God. And Tommy, thank you for talking about being a real man. That it wasn't in holding some sort of earthly thing like a gun that made you a man, but it was actually walking as a man of God. And you know, tonight, folks, if you have prayed that prayer, as Tommy led us, and you have prayed that prayer to ask Jesus into your life, then drop this page a private message right now. And we want to be able to help you in any way we can. If you know Tommy or Brendan, that's why you've tuned in here. And you can get in touch with them. Please get in touch with them as soon as possible. Don't leave it till tomorrow. Folks, this couple, uh, they, they, they run a church now in Dublin, in Tala. Um, God is moving in it. I am asking all of you, there's hundreds of people listening right now. I'm asking you to take this family on your heart and pray for them and um look folks tonight thank you for being with us tonight um tell me this um oh there's so much i would love to ask you but uh, just tell me this tommy that was 2001 um it's now 2022 and um, the both of you are saying it's still the best thing you ever did inviting jesus into your life yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and it just keeps getting better and better. You know, I remember talking to someone years ago mm. and he says, well, look, it's a honeymoon period that you've just gone through where, uh, you know, because I was always, you know, the Bible says that those who are forgiven much love much. Yeah. And, and I have to be honest with you, my love for Jesus and his love for me, I know he can never love me anymore, but my love for Jesus it just keeps getting deeper and deeper mm. and deeper and deeper. And, and you know, this honeymoon period that I'm in, I can honestly tell you, it's never going to end. Amen. It's never <laughs> going to end. Yeah, and, and, you know, so even when I, when I go to glory, it's just going to get better, yes. isn't it? Yes. It's going to get better. So, no, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying the journey with Jesus. Yes. And it just keeps getting better and better. Praise God. Well, look, it would be an absolute pleasure sometime. If you're ever passing through for mana, please do um, pop in with us at Brookborough. Um, and uh, it'd be great. I, I hope tonight, folks, you're get, if you're getting a sense of, of the hope that Christ has tonight, doesn't matter how low it looks, how bad it looks, what a story of transformation tonight. And if you tonight can't see that there is a God who is real, and I don't know what else it will take to prove it to you. But let's pray for this couple tonight. Um, so let's pray for them, folks. Let's thank God for them. And uh, please do put in the comments tonight if you have been blessed. If you have any uh, negative comments, keep them to yourself. But if you have something just to bless, to bless this couple with, please do put it into the comments. Father, we thank you so much, God. Oh, God, our hearts have been really just stirred our hearts have been touched tonight, God, to believe again that you are the God of transformation who can take any life. There's no limit, Lord, to what you can do in a life. Mm. God, you're able to take the most broken situations and make something beautiful out of it. And Father, thank you for this couple. Thank you for the marriage, Lord, where they were literally, Lord, it couldn't have been much worse, God. Well, God, mm. you have took it, Lord, and it's evident before our eyes the love they have for each other. Thank you mm. for that. Thank you, Lord, for saving their lives. Thank you, mm. Lord, that not even yeah. death will separate them because they're going to be in eternity mm. uh, together with you, God. And Father, we pray for people who are watching tonight. We pray that they, just like Tommy, Lord, maybe there's someone listening feels 
God wouldn't be interested in me. Father, help them to see tonight you're interested in them. Father, yeah. just like um, our dear sister Brenda, she was going through tough times, but she held on to you. Help mm. each lady listening, each man listening, who is a Christian, to hold on to you until you fulfill what you've promised them. Pray for those that are going through tough times tonight. They'll hold on to you, God. Bless mm. this couple. Bless the church, Lord, they're ministering in. Bless the people in it. Lord, we pray, keep them together and keep them going on with you. And Lord, mm. will you add to that church daily, we pray. In Jesus' name, we ask these things tonight. Amen. 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 Praise you. God. Thank you. Tommy, Brenda, you guys, it has been such a blessing. We love you and we thank you so much for being with us tonight. We're going to save you um, looking at the screen <laughs> for a few seconds while we just uh, say goodbye to everyone. But been a pleasure. God bless you both. Bye. Okay, folks, what a blessing it has been tonight. Trust you have been blessed. Um, and we're just going to end with a song, um, just speaking about what uh, the couple tonight have been speaking about. What a night of encouragement. But if you tonight are not saved, get saved tonight. Ask Jesus in your life. And if you need any help, just drop this page a private message. Folks, we're going to be on live on Tuesday night again. We're going to be kickstarting our Tuesday night lives. Uh, keep in touch with our social media. We'll let you know more details about that. If you tonight are listening and you're struggling with addiction or you're the carer of someone in addiction, just like Brenda was, well, we have a group who meet every Monday night and there's a team there who come alongside people who are struggling in any form of addiction from substance uh, to pornography, to whatever it may be. If you're a carer and you're just saying, I need someone to talk to, the group meet on Monday nights at 8 p.m. at Brookborough Elam. You'll be more than welcome to come along. As no judgment, you will just be showing love and a listening ear. That's tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Folks, there's other things going on, but I just want to play this song. Uh, let it minister to you tonight. Thank you for being with us. Next Sunday night, uh, we have another wonderful couple with us um, from Monaghan. Uh, well, living in Armagh, uh, but uh, they're down in Monaghan, Elam. And uh, it's good friends um, of ours, Neil and Julianne McMullen. Um, many of you, I'm sure, have heard of them. They'll be with us next Sunday night sharing their stories. God bless. Folks, sleep well tonight. Trust in the Lord with all of your hearts. And let's continue to believe that he is who he says he is, the one who can save and transform lives. Good night and God bless. Oh, I won't lie. I've more than an ounce of doubt in my mind and Through these eyes Oh, I've struggled to see you at work in my life Cause I have walked through the wilderness Oh, I've been crushed by the weight of my feet Singing